working on the 2009 Pontiac Vibe with the 2.4 liter 2AZFE motor and the U250E transmission. Looking to replace the SL3 solenoid on this transmission. So what we're going to end up doing is removing the 17 screws, but not all the way. We're just going to loosen them to where the uh, valve body just comes off of the transmission a little bit so we don't have to remove it all the way because these springs, this one and this one, uh, they're just in there by gravity and being forced in between the valve body and the transmission. So those will just fall out and those are terrible to put back in. Here's a layout of the solenoids. SL1 I've already replaced, but we're replacing SL3. And SL3 and SL2 have the exact same manufacturer number and they're interchangeable. Is there a 10 millimeter? So we'll just this back off and there will be some transmission fluid that leaks out so make sure you've got a, a drip pin underneath. With the transmission filter or removed, uh, we're going to identify the SL3 from underneath, from underneath the vehicle right now. So we've got our diagram matching under the car. This will be SL1, SLT, and SL3. Try to get a better view of the SL3. Next, what we're going to do is go around and remove this or re loosen the 17 uh, bolts that are holding in there. There's a 10 millimeter and 8 millimeter around the perimeter that we need to loosen so that we can access this SL3. Looks like the SL1. There's not enough room to pull this out all the way. It hits the frame, so it has to be dropped down to be able to pull out and replace. So when you get those 17 bolts loosened up, it's going to break a seal and it's going to bring a lot more fluid down, so make sure you've got your drain pan ready. So it's starting to come down, come loose. Um, it's mostly hanging by just a couple of bolts up here. Um, this is the SL3. We're on the opposite side now. This particular um, plug is just a real pain in the butt. You're just going to have to fight with it and push it in and work with it a little bit. Just be careful because of the wiring that goes right there. Um, some of these some of these bolts you may have to take and back out all the way just to get it down far enough. I'm not there yet. But I'm leaving it in place right now until I can get this uh, plug out because I definitely need the leverage um, so this isn't too loose. Alright, to get this SL3 out, you've got this bracket that holds two of them in together. So that 10 mil has to be removed and this 8 mil has to be removed. And this wire right here was unplugged because there's a bolt back here you have to get to. This plug's in the way so that came down. Okay, so I had to remove a few more screws than I had anticipated, but it's down far enough now to where I can get the SL3 solenoid out. Uh, also note that the accumulator piston that's up under here where those springs were that I showed earlier, it has come down. So I'm going to need to make sure that I push that back up and that those other springs are lined up when we secure it back up on top. So this is the uh, solenoid that was just taken off the vehicle. Uh, I've got it set up to do a check uh, to see if it'll give us any click. So I've got a 9 volt battery with a negative lead and a positive lead coming off of it. And I'm just going to touch the positive lead without crossing over to the negative lead. And I'm getting no response. So that shows it was bad. Uh, so this is the new one that I've ordered, and I've got it set up the same way, positive and negative. Just going to touch over here to the positive. You can hear the audible click, and you can see the solenoid move. Okay. To further test this, uh, just to show different tests, I'm going to check the ohms on it. So I'm going to connect... It doesn't matter which lead goes to which, 
uh, one to positive, one to negative 5.8, and that's actually acceptable range, but the solenoid was also bad. So it's important to note when you're putting this back together that your manual valve lines up so when it's in place um, those two connect because that's what controls your ship your manual shifting of the gear okay I'm gonna put this back together off camera but I wanted to make a note that if you had to remove some of these bolts because you just had to make room for them that there's lengths notated and by the letter so if you take a look at this you'll have an instruction as far as which bolt goes to which location because uh, that does matter and then from underneath the couple things you need to check for uh, these accumulator piston is what I had to push back up and then this ball likes to fall out in the spring so make sure the spring still in its location that this is in its location from underneath before you tie, tie it back together Last thing on here, as far as finding it, um, SL3 is known as the pressure control solenoid C. Um, you'll mostly find SL2 as opposed to SL3 when you go to find these parts. Um, also, the reason I'm changing the SL3 on this is because I'm having a really hard shift between third and fourth gear, which is controlled by the SL3.